Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing dihedral groups. Okay, right, uh, so we discussed that the dihedral groups are this class of groups which we denote d little n, where little n can be any natural number, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. onwards. Okay, and the way that you can think of d little n is that what you do is you create this set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to little n. So you create this set of all natural numbers up to and including little n. Okay? And the group dn is going to consist of symbols that represent the, uh, well, certain set permutations of uh, this set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to little n. Okay? And then the composition law that we'll put on this set of symbols or the group uh, will be. Um, the will just relate to the composition of those set permutations. Okay, now, in the case of dihedral groups, d little m, we think of certain set permutations. There are certain special set permutations that we want to consider. And what we're thinking about is putting the symbols 1 to n around the edge of a disk, like so, okay? And then we're thinking of all real-world manoeuvres that you could make to that. So you can have all of the uh, rotations uh, within the two-dimensional plane, and you can also have all of the flips as well, okay? Um, and those are all the permutations that are going to have a symbol representing them in the d little m group, basically. Okay, so I think to make this more concrete, we should just do some examples. Okay, so we'll, again, we'll start from the bottom and then work up. Okay, so we'll start with D1 and D2, which are a little bit trivial. Okay, then we'll get to D3 and D4, and those will give us more insight. Okay, so let's start off with D1, the simplest one. Okay, so here we will be considering a set of just one thing in it. Okay, and what we will do, once again, is we'll take our little disk here, and we'll put this one symbol on the edge of our disk, so we might as well put it at the top there, okay? And then we can rotate our disk in the two-dimensional plane and flip it over and try and create set permutations uh, by doing this, okay? Now, there's only one set permutation that we can create, which is the set permutation which maps one onto one, basically, the identity set permutation, uh, which you basically get by making no rotations at all, or you could make you know, a rotation by 360 degrees, or indeed a flip over uh, down uh, this line of symmetry, all of those will give this same set permutation, this identity set permutation. Okay, so that's the only set permutation uh, that you can actually create here. Okay, so D1, therefore, is going to consist of uh, the set containing this single symbol representing this identity set permutation. Okay, so here now is D1. Okay, but of course that's not a group, that's just a set. What we need to do is define a composition law on this in order to actually turn this into a group. Okay, so we'll call it abstract composition, so we'll have a, a circle like so. Okay, and we just need to define what the only possible composition that we have actually is going to be equal to, which is I composed with I. Okay, now we will to do this, go back to remembering that our um, symbol I represents this identity map and that composition is going to represent composing the maps. So basically this just means do the identity followed by another identity which overall gives us the identity. Because if you map 1 to 1 and then 1 to 1 again, okay, the overall map is 1 to 1. Okay, right, so there is D1, and again, it's just equal to the exact same thing that we had in the case of S1, which, remember, was also equal to C1. Okay, so that's not particularly interesting, and I'm afraid D2 isn't going to be particularly interesting. I'm just doing these to set the scene, and then we'll go on to D3 and then D4, which are much more interesting. Okay, right, so D2 then now, let's do D2. So again, we'll think in terms of uh, set permutations of a set, and this time the set that we will be thinking of set permutations of will be the set of two things. Okay, again what we will do is we'll take our disk here, okay, and we'll put our two um, symbols here, our two numbers, on the opposite sides of the disk here. 
Okay, right. Now let's think of set permutations that we can achieve by making real-world maneuvers. Okay, so of course we still have the identity map, which is the real-world maneuver when you do nothing, okay? Or any real-world maneuver that's equivalent to doing nothing, basically. I mean, you could rotate it around 360 degrees or flip it over down this line, but they're all equivalent to doing nothing as far as moving these uh, symbols is concerned. Okay, so we've still got our identity map here, so we'll denote that once again as I. Okay, and then the other map that we have is where we swap one and two around, and you can view this as being many different maneuvers now. You could view it as just being the rotation by 180 degrees, or you could view it as being the flipping down this line of symmetry. Okay, so you could flip it over in this line of symmetry, that would also swap one and two. However, whatever way you actually achieve it, this again is a transposition of the elements one and two, basically. Okay, right, so it maps 1 onto 2 and 2 onto 1, and again we'll denote that as the transposition tau. Okay, so now to create the group D2, what we will do is we'll stick these two symbols, I and tau, together into a set. So here is I and here is tau, so we'll stick them together in a set here, okay, and then we'll define a composition law on that set to turn it into a group. Okay, right. So here we go, here is our composition table, again we'll call it abstract composition, and I'll put all the elements of the group on the sides of my table here, okay? Uh, right, so, now we just have to fill in these four entries, the identity composed with the identity, so do nothing and then do nothing again, of course the net result there is that you do nothing, okay? Tau, uh, which you can either think of as the rotation by 180 degrees or flipping it over, okay, then com uh, we want to compose I with tau, so let's do I composed with tau, that means do tau first and then do I, okay, so flip over and then do nothing, okay, of course that's still just flipping over. Then let's consider what tau composed with I is, that means do nothing and then flip over, again the net result there is that you just flip over. Okay, and then tau composed with tau means do tau twice. So flip over, send one to two and two to one, and then flip back again. Okay, uh, of course that overall ends up being equivalent to doing nothing. Okay, so there now is our D2 set. Okay, uh, which of course is exactly the same as what we had for S2 and also C2. So that's not particularly interesting either. So this is just equal to S2, which was equal to C2. Okay, now let's get more interesting, uh, well a little bit more interesting, we'll go to D3. Now D3 is going to be different from C3, but unfortunately it is going to be equal to S3, but it will give us some insight uh, regardless. Okay, and then D4 is the one where it really gets interesting, because that is different from both C4 and S4. Okay, right, so let's do D3. So we're thinking of set permutations of a set of three elements. So 1, 2, and 3, here's the set that we're going to be thinking of set permutations of. Okay, we'll put them around the edge of our disk, so we'll have 1 up here, 2 over here, and 3 over here, with the angle between them as uh, 120 degrees. Okay, now let's think of the set permutations that we can actually create by rotating it in the real world, basically. So not just rotating it in the two-dimensional plane, but also rotating it in the third dimension to create these flips, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so, which set permutations can we get? Well, obviously we can get the identity map. That's just where we do nothing. Okay, so 1 will go to 1, 2 will go to 2, and 3 will go to 3. Once again, we'll just call that the identity map, we'll give it the symbol i. Okay, then we can get all of the cyclic permutations, where we uh, rotate round by a certain angle, so where we rotate by 120 degrees and where we rotate by 240 degrees. So let's firstly do the rotation by 120 degrees. So in the rotation by 120 degrees, 1 will go to where 2 is, 2 will go to where 3 is, and 3 will then go to where 1 is, okay, so we'll call that sigma as normal, okay. Then we'll have the rotation by 240 degrees, and we uh, know how we denote the rotation by 240 degrees. Uh, we rotate it, oh, sorry, we denote it as sigma squared, okay, because when you rotate by 240 degrees, that's equivalent to rotating by 120 degrees and then doing it again, okay, so composing sigma with sigma again, okay, so here is our rotation by uh, 
240 degrees, and we'll denote it sigma squared here. So what actually happens? Well, one will end up going to three, okay? Two will end up going to one, and three will end up going to two. Okay, so that's our permutation sigma squared. So those are all the cyclic permutations. Those are the ones that we had in C3. However, we now have flips to add on. Okay, so let's think where we can flip this. Well, we could flip it down this line of symmetry here. Okay, so if we flip down that line of symmetry there, what's going to happen? We are going to hold one constant. We're going to send 2 to where 3 is and 3 to where 2 is. Okay, so you can probably guess what's going to happen now. We are going to get all of these transpositions that we had in S3, but we didn't have in C3. Okay, so 2 will go to where 3 is, 3 will go where, to where 2 is, and 1 will go to where 1 is. So we'll call that the transposition of 2 and 3, as we did when we were studying S3 in my videos on uh, the symmetric groups. Okay, so we'll call that transposition tau at 2, 3, because we're transposing 2 and 3. Okay, alternatively, we could flip it in another line of symmetry. Here is another line of symmetry here, through 3. Okay, and if we flip it through that line of symmetry, we'll be holding three constant and then swapping one and two. Okay, so let's just draw out what we're going to end up doing here. Okay, so we're going to swap one and two. So one will go to where two is and two will go to where one is and three will remain constant. Okay, now that will denote the transposition of one and two. So we'll denote that tau one, two. Okay, then finally, there's one more line of symmetry, which is the one going through two here, so we can flip down that line of symmetry, okay, that will hold two constant and it will transpose one and three, so let's just show this one, so this will send one to where three is, it will send three to where one is, and then it will send two to where two is, and we'll call that the transposition of um, one and three. Okay, and we'll colour that one in in orange. So, basically, in this D3 group, what you are going to do is you're going to have a symbol representing uh, all of these set permutations, because all of these six set permutations are uh, creatable by these real-world manoeuvres, basically. Okay, so, in D3, what you're going to do is you're going to put these six symbols, which I'm using to denote these six set permutations, and by the way, these are all the set permutations that exist for a set of three things. Okay, so through these real-world manoeuvres, we can actually get every possible set permutation of these three things. There aren't any more. These are all of the set permutations of this set of three things. Okay, so we will now create our group D3 by putting all of these symbols together. I, sigma, sigma squared, tau 1, 2, tau 1, 3, and tau 2, 3, and then we will write out the composition table on that, and I'm not going to do that because that uh, has 36 entries, so it will take a long time to work out, but it will form a group when you uh, write out that full composition table. It will obey all of the axioms of group theory. Okay, so D3 is then just equal to S3 overall. This is exactly the same as S3 because you've got all of the same uh, set permutations as you had in S3, basically. Okay, now we'll call it there for this video. We'll have a break here. In the next video, what we'll go on to is the most interesting one that we've seen here. All of these are a little bit trivial because they're all groups that we've already seen, uh, just called a different name, basically. Okay, but when we go on to D4, we're suddenly going to see something new. Okay, because D4 is neither going to be equal to C4, nor is it going to be equal to S4. It's going to be in between uh, the two of them. Okay, so we'll do D4 in the next video.